but I'll not allow his radio contracts to be cancelled. As his stepmother, 30% of his income belongs to me. And 30% to us. After all, we are his aunt. And who gets him all the job? I do. That's why I'm being paid 10% for doing all the work. His records are bringing in $2,000 a week. And my share of that is, uh, uh, Jerry, how much is it? $600. Then our share is $600. And besides my $200 cut, 30% goes to the government. Ladies and gentlemen, please. I realize that your sole incomes are derived from the contracts you negotiate for this child. But I'm not concerned with your personal problems. My client, the Superior Pictures Corporation, offers $100,000 for Ronald Kimball's services for one picture. For his services, mind you, not yours. Now, all I want to know is, are you prepared to deliver him to the Hollywood Studios for the month of June, July, and August? Why must he cancel the other contracts? Can't he do those, too? I understand Jack Benny and... Walter Winchell do. But how can Ronnie be in New York and Hollywood at the same time? If you can figure that one out, Mr. Stone, it's a deal. Client's interests are my interests, and I must protect them. Protect mine, too. Well, I thought everything was all set. Our company met your demands. 150,000 for the picture. Now you want us to cut our working day in order to squeeze in broadcasts and recordings. I don't see how you can fairly ask it. Not only do good pictures take time and care, but that boy needs all the rest he can get when he is not working. As it is, I... I don't see what time he gets for playing. Well, he has half an hour before breakfast. And then it's time for his violin lesson. And his bodyguard takes him for a walk after dinner. Three times around the block. And of course, when it's raining, he goes in the car. You see, Mr. Gifford, an artist's life is a short one. And I want to get all the money I can for Ronnie while he's in demand. I understand, Mr. Price. Just a moment, please. Ronnie? Don't you think you'd like to look over the studio? Thank you, Mr. Gifford. I'd like to do that. Mm -hmm. Otto, you take Ronnie out and introduce him to the Wee Kids Company. Show him around the lot, whatever he wants to see. Yes, sir. Adam, I think we can discuss this business without Ronnie's presence. <laughs> hey, kids, come here a minute. This is Ronald Kimball. He's going to make a picture here. Make yourselves acquainted. Hi, Ronald. Hi, Hi, Gee, isn't he cute? What are you made up for, little Lord Nilsen? Gee, are you making a touch for that part, too? I tried for it, but they said I wasn't the type. I hope you get it. You want to play? Certainly. Thank you very much. You can play with us. We're sure to tackle. I choose you. Come on, guys. Let's get going. Get over there. Watch that guy. And if he gets the ball... What a grip. You sure got strength in your arms. That's from playing the violin. Gives you muscle. consideration for your mother's feelings? Ronnie, if you hurt yourself, what could we do? <laughs> Gee, I made a touchdown. <laughs> so at last, to home. Being cooped up in those six suites at the Beverly Arcadia Hotels had me practically screaming. I believe we'll be quite comfortable here, Lottie. 
Buy her will have to be done over. I don't like green. And mine, green makes me bilious. What do you think of this place? Nice little lean to, isn't it? It was I who convinced Mr. Gifford that Ronnie could take care of his record and radio contracts without interfering with his motion picture work. Oh, boy! A swimming pool! Jerry, have the pool drained at once and build a fence round it. Well, he might fall in. You're quite right. If anything happens to the boy, what would happen to us? I don't see why I can't have the kids over to play sometime. That will do, Ronnie. I've told you you must have nothing to do with those rough studio boys. And that's final. Wasting your time playing when you should be studying. My heavens. Come, come, Ronnie. It's time you should be practicing for your broadcast tonight. Why do I have to practice? I've played them a hundred times. Why can't I go out and play like other boys do? We fret and worry to see that you keep improving. And this is the thanks we get. You must learn the meaning of gratitude. All right, then. Do you have to follow me everywhere I go? What should they hire me for? Ain't I your bodyguard? Well, nothing's going to happen to me in here. Hey, do you think you could squeeze in Schubert's serenade for me? The way you play it, it does something to me. Well, I'll try. Thanks. turn all in his grave. I know the piece. Why do I have to practice it? What you need is discipline, and I'm going to give it to you. Now we'll try it again. selling such music. I was standing at that door all, I was there all the time, and I didn't hear nothing. Then who hit me on the head and threw me into the car? It looks like a well-planned job to me. It was done so silent-like. What do you mean? Kidnappers. Oh, kidnappers? Kidnappers? We're ruined. 
heavens! Oh, heavens! I'm bankrupt! Certainly. We looked everywhere for him. He's gone, I tell you. Disappeared. Vanished. Mr. Price, I'll, uh, I'll come right over myself. When did you miss the boy? This morning. What's your name? We can't. You live here? Yes. Who are you? Bodyguard. You? Step up. Put out a general broadcast. Ronald Kimball has disappeared. Regarding Ronald Kimball, here's the description. Age 10. Height, 4 feet 10 inches. Weight, 112 pounds. Last seen wearing Eton jacket. Black Windsor tie. Hi there, new kid. Come on in. Thanks, I shall. discarded the theory that the Gollinger gang was implicated as various members of it have been reported seen in the southern states. This concludes our news broadcast for this period. However, any further developments on the Ronnie Kimball case will be flashed to you immediately. We now continue with our program. The newsboys sure get things right. <laughs> so the Gollinger gang's heading south. Eh, uh, where do they think we're going? Florida for the winter? I'll be glad when the chief shows up. There's too many people around here to suit me. What difference does it make if the chief got here first? If we gotta wait for Duke. He's bringing the sugar. Here. Do you know who that bloke Robbins is? He paid three million income tax last year. Seems a pity to let the government have all that money. I wonder how we could get some of it. Listen, Popcorn, don't do no figuring until Gollinger gets here. Oh, and uh, did you hear the news? <laughs> Fancy trying to hang that Kimball case on us. Now, that kid ought to be worth a hundred grand. They say he's feeding a bunch of leeches that robs him of every penny he makes. Disgusting, I calls it. Yeah. Can you imagine selfish people like that picking on a poor, helpless kid? Maybe we could figure an angle to, uh, uh muscle in on this local mob. Yeah, yeah, maybe we could, huh? Listen, you dope, didn't I tell you we can't do anything until the chief gets here? I wish the Duke could get here. He's the guy I'm anxious to see. Maybe he decided to go to Mexico, alone. Not the Duke, boy. He's, he's as honest as I am. Why worry about it? Not him I'm worried about. The dough he's carrying in that little black bag. You know what that means to us. Yeah, heavy sugar for us, and a passport out of the country for Gollinger. Here's hoping that nothing happens to that little black bag. the measles? You better take it on the lamb, kid. What? Beat it. I got work to do. If you turn it the other way, it'll work. Are you still here? See, didn't I tell you it'd work? All right, go on, beat it. Here, I'll help you. Come on, I'll help you finish it. 
I was afraid of that. What's your name, kid? Scrapper. At least that's what they call me. Oh, a tough guy, huh? My name's Duke. Oh, you the Duke of something, like the uh, Duke of York? I met a Duke once. No, they just call me that on account of because uh, I'm a snappy dresser. You know, a ladies' man. <laughs> Gee, I'll bet I know what you are. You're a G-man. Huh? Are you on a case? Now listen, Scrapper, I can't say nothing. You see, us G-men gotta work secret-like. You didn't even see me if anybody asked you. You gotta turn off up here for Pinecrest. That's a joint way up in the mountains. But say, I ain't supposed to tell you nothing. I didn't, see? Okay, Duke. How about letting... I mean, uh, letting me switch on the radio? Just a minute. Well, all right. Only I wish it was time for Amos and Andy. <laughs> We are interrupting this program to give you the latest developments in the Kimball case. Police are now of the opinion that Gollinger is implicated. We regret to say that due to the disappearance of Ronnie Kimball, tonight's Hoosier Health Food program featuring the young violinist will not be heard. Can you imagine that? Gollinger never even heard of that kid. Duke, you certainly are smart. You're a swell G-man. That's why they hired me. Gollinger had nothing to do with it because Ronnie Kimball wasn't kidnapped. How do you know? Because I'm Ronnie Kimball. I, I wasn't kidnapped. I just ran away. Well, you was just kidding. Ain't that it? No, Duke, I'm not kidding. I'm really Ronnie Kimball. I switched clothes with a scarecrow. Holy gee. Well, what's the matter, Duke? News is a fine when you is, not telling me. That's like double crossing. Every cop in the country's out looking for you. You want me to get picked up? But well, they can't do anything to you. Ah, but you see, that means I gotta do a lot of explaining. I gotta dump you in quick. Here, Scrapper's a couple of bucks. It'll get you home. If them cops catch you, don't talk. I mean, ain't I ever going to see you again? Oh, sure, Scrapper. We's pals. If you ever get to Washington, hook me up. Listen, Lug, what kind of a driver are you? I guess my brakes need adjusting or something. Uh, now, don't get excited. I'll pay for the damage. I know when I'm wrong. I have a good mind up. Calm yourself out, Chief. It was, it was unavoidable. Well, I'll pay for the works, mister. Here. Huh. I must have left my pocketbook and my overcoat. Yeah, this ought to cover the damages. <laughs> Nonsense. I carry insurance. Oh, but that'd be dishonest. Dripping the insurance company. Here. Uh, well, if you insist, uh, uh, take it, Archie, and have the bumper repaired. And bring the change back to Mr. Uh, Mr. Duke. Duke's the name. How do you do, Mr. Duke? I'm Benjamin P. Robbins, head of the International Capital and president of Railroad Utilities. Oh, I'm glad to meet you. I understand the railroads ain't been making no money on account of because the uh, buses kind of muscle in on their business. Is that a fact? I think you've been misinformed. Perhaps those reports show the railroads increased their business 70% over the previous year. Is that a fact? Well, I ought to know. Didn't I pay $50,000 income tax on just one of my railroad stocks last year? 50000 That reminds me. Pardon me, brother. What 
think of this one, huh? What crude people? You don't appreciate art. Ah, can you imagine? Me getting the room right next door. It's easy. Yeah, and you almost got yourself in a nice jam out front, smacking that car. No, nothing like that. That was Robbins, the railroad man. Hey, do you know what? Railroads actually made money last year. Can you imagine that? Say, where'd you plant that sugar? Say, under my mattress. Heard from Gollinger? He'll get here, don't worry. Okay, I won't. You better get that sugar in here. Never know what's happening when you ain't in the room. Okay, solitaire. I was just gonna suggest that myself. Hey, wait a minute. Got your pass key? Sure. Go this way. Yeah, I wish the chief would get here. I get nervous just waiting. Come in the front door like company. One more surprise like that, and they'll be taking you out the back door for good. Say, did anybody see you come in here with that? Why, that's so hot, there's smoke coming out of it. What do you think I am, a dumbbell? Hey, how about a nice, quiet little game of poker? That's a good idea. Yeah. We'll play a few hands till the chief gets here. Yeah. Come on. Hey, hey, there you go, blundering again. Just when I'm about to win, you mess things up. Oh, I wish Tango had drilled you. I'm sorry, Solitaire, but how did I know you was winning for a change? Uh, uh, no, 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 not with them there cards, Solitaire. Why? A blind man could read the marks on the back of them. <laughs> well, my eyes ain't so good as they used to be. I gotta have big marks on them. It's my opinion the boy's been kidnapped. And if he has, it's a professional job. A band of cold, relentless criminals. Now, we've done our part. Officers are patrolling every highway in the state. Every intersection is being watched. Cars are being searched in the hope of uncovering the whereabouts of the boy. Now you've got to do your part, and it's not going to be easy. The promise of the return of the victim is always made in exchange of money, and seldom fulfilled. Because people in your spot try to handle it alone. Now you're not competent to deal with these people. We are, that's our business. Now at the first words you get in regard to Ronnie, I want you to communicate with me. Coffee and a couple of hot dogs. That's some dog you got there, son. Yeah. I'll give you 50 cents for him. No, I wouldn't send him for anything. <laughs> well, <laughs> you hungry? Yeah. Hey, our boy. Up. Ah, that's the. Suppose you want some of my hot dogs? All right, come on. Up. I'll take two of these, please. Oh. No, Hercules, you can't have any of this candy. It's bad for your teeth. You stick around here with the blockade. I'll continue on up the highway. <laughs> Guess I made a hit with your dog, son. He wants to go home with me. Right. Yeah, he seems to like you all right. You're not going up by Pinecrest, are you? Sure, I'm going within a couple of miles of the place. Hop in. Gee, thanks. <laughs> Wait a minute. This is important. Calling all cars in blockade. Calling cars in blockade. This is the last broadcast on Kimball. Wait at your post for directors. That is all. That means me. Guess we'd better step on it. What's happening? A rich kid's been kidnapped. We're on a manhunt. It must be tough to be a kid. Yes. So what did you say your name was, son? Oh, mister, here's where I get out. We nearly passed it. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Come on, 
Hercules. About two miles. Gee, that's a pretty long walk. Why don't you let it ride in the rumble seat? Do you mind riding with the top down? No, I like to ride anyway. Hop on. All set? Here you are, at the end of the line. Thanks. Death? Not me. Go in there and inquire at the desk. They'll tell you whether your friend has arrived. Thanks, I will. You want me to take your horse around to the stable? No, I'll take it myself. You're not going to make a hell of a little housewife out of me, Mr. Tom Carter. <laughs> But I tell you, there's no one registered by the name of Duke. If there was, I certainly would be the very first one to know about it. <laughs> However, the man that you describe must be Mr. Edwards in room 118. He's the last one to check in. I'll ring his room. The cops have picked up the chief. Listen, Popcorn, don't be getting no ideas. We're waiting for Gollinger. I'm getting mighty nervous waiting. Ain't I just as nervous as anybody else? But we can't do nothing until Gollinger gets here. Oh, there you are, young man. I was wondering where you are. I have Mr. Edwards for you now. He was in another room. I just used the telephone right around there. you, Duke? This is Scrapper. Say, I'm going to see you at once. I've discovered something. Where are you? Well, all right, stay there. I'll be seeing you. I don't know what all the dolls see in me. Well, all of them. I pass. I guess my luck's turning sour. I gotta go in here a minute. I'll be right back. I'll stay. Give me three. Give me one. Easy now, easy. This ain't exactly ethical, but... Hey, can you beat that? A full house, three aces and a pair of kings. He's off his nut. Are oh, you just discovering that? That guy's up to something. Deal me out this hand. Then we'll have to make it cutthroat. Not mine. I'm playing solitaire. Thought you was gonna keep away from me like you said. You're trying to come up to Woods. I came to bring you your wallet. You dropped it when you let me out. Ah, oh, what'd you bring it back for? Why'd you go on home? Oh, I wouldn't do a thing like that to a pal. Well, oh, thanks, Scrapper, but now beat it, will you? Let me get busy. But, Duke, there's something I've got to tell you. You know who's got the room right next to yours? The Gollinger gang. What are you doing, snooping around? They're waiting for Gollinger to show up. Gee, but you're brave. I'll bet I know why you haven't arrested the gang. You're waiting to take Gollinger, too. And single-handed. Sure, sure, kid. But now you gotta beat it. I'm taking my life in my hands as it is. Now beat it, will you please? I'll go if you think I'm in the way. That's a nice kid. Then you just scram out of here and leave everything to me. Well, so long, 
Thank you. So long, pal. Come on, Huggy. Ah, you know how it is. The dogs just won't leave me alone. Oh, sure, I know. That was a fancy one I saw you talking to down in the lobby with the pants on and the sweater. Oh, that kid. Oh, he was trying to sell me a magazine. Said he was working his way through college. Fifty mile an hour through an intersection. Twenty dollars a four day. Where did you get this? What's the difference? It's good, ain't it? Wait until my boss finds out about this. You'll be sent so far into the sticks, you'll have to chop your way back to civilization. Unless you can explain how you happen to have this bill, you'll have plenty of chopping to do yourself. Archie will have the car back by evening. It wasn't much of a smash-up. Hello. Did you find your friend? Yes, I saw him. This is my father, Scrapper. Glad to know you. Uh, another one of your fellows? My best ball. <laughs> how about a Scrapper? Sure. Want to marry her? She's got a pretty rich daddy. Oh, she's too old for me. But I know a swell fellow she ought to marry. Well, who's that? Oh, a friend of hers. Think he can support her in the style she's been accustomed to? Why worry about that? You said you had plenty of money. Oh, Come on, Scrapper. Let you and I go for a walk before it gets dark. See you later, Daddy. Bye-bye. Hey, Scrapper. What are you trying to do, steal my girl? He already has. It's getting pretty late. Hadn't you better be starting for home, young fella? Have you very far to go? Oh, quite a ways. See those dark clouds up there? That means a storm. Well, I don't mind a storm. But regardless, we've got to get you home before the storm breaks. Well, I don't have to be home. Have you a telephone at your house, Scrappy? Well, yes. We could phone his mother and tell her he's safe with us. He could stay here for the night with you. Could I? That'd be swell. You sure your mother won't mind? I'll telephone and explain. No, thanks. But I'll call home myself. I'm good at explaining. Gee, this is swell. I like to live in a place like this. Up here. You do? That's yours for tonight. Want to try it? Uh, there you are, young fella. You think you can sleep up there? Oh, I can sleep any place. And now that the sleeping problem has been settled, suppose you give it a little thought to food. I've been thinking about that. Poor kid, you must be starved. Oh, no, but Hercules here must be hungry. He had to run most of the way. <laughs> now, what do you think Hercules would like for dinner? A sirloin steak smothered in onions? I don't think he'd like the onions. I'll have Jeeves get it ready at once. Oh, Jeeves! Did you call, madam? Jeeves, a steak. This thick, for Hercules. And cut the offer, His Excellency. Yes, madam. And oh, yes, Jeeves. Champagne for the guests. Yes, madam. I'm glad there is. Ain't a butler around here. I wouldn't like that, would you? Not a bit. You better phone your folks now, Scrapper. They must be worried about you. Oh, nobody worries about me. But I'll call them later. See that he phones Tom. We don't want him to get into any trouble. I'll see that he calls. Scrapper and I are going to fight for that first dance tonight. No. How about it, Scrapper? Oh, no. We won't fight. You can have all the dances with us. Scrapper, I'm afraid you're a little flatterer. See you later. I wonder what she meant by that. Here we are, Scrapper. Oh, thanks, Tom. Jean's boots and everything. Oh, then these are girls' clothes. But Jean wears boys' clothes. Oh, well, in that case, I'll wear them. Get your head in. <clears throat> there we go. Just the neck. Wait a minute. We bad men always uh, check our shooting irons when we dine in public. But ain't we going to eat here? Well, I usually take my meals out at the lodge. But why do you do that when you have a kitchen and a stove? 
Gee, I wish I had a place where I could cook my own dinner. Or would you rather eat here, Scrapper? I'll say. All right, but you'll have to help me with the cooking. Oh, boy, just like we were out camping. Miss Rashmore, you're simply devastating. <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> Hello, Max. Hello. You'll excuse me, girls, but Max always expects me to have a first dance with him. Oh, sweet of him. But Max, can't you let Roy leave the orchestra for just one little teeny weeny day? Now, honey, what could they do without me? Well, let's try it and find out. What? Besides, I'm not used to being a wallflower. <laughs> you go right over there and sit down. You can watch me. Come on now. What's the matter, Father? Didn't you enjoy your dinner? Oh, the dinner was all right. I know what you need, a smoke. <laughs> Say, what's this going to cost me, a new fur coat? No, I want you to have a good time this evening. But remember, one cigar. Is that a promise? You have my word. <laughs> Why, Jean, don't you trust me? Certainly, but I'm just playing safe. Here, here, here. Where are you going with those cigars? Max, my father's compliment. <laughs> Thank you, Miss Robin. Pretty good band. Any smooth babes around here? Just learned a few new steps from a honey up in San Francisco. What a kid. All honey. You save your feet, Tango. You may need him for a quick getaway. How can I concentrate with you bobbing around? That's what I say. I gotta use my mind. Tango, what do you say? 12,000. I'm in. Okay, Tango, I'll call you 12,000 and raise you 10,000. I give up. How about you, Tango? Give up? I'll call you. What do you got? Two pairs, nines and five. You got me beat. I thought you were bluffing. Oh, huh, this is a pleasure. Well, I think I'll go out and look around a little bit. Might be overlooking something. Can you imagine that? Me winning 50 grand. Gee, I wish we was playing for keeps. Well, I'm heading for the lunch counter. I think I'll take this over and plant it under my mattress. No, you don't. I don't leave this room till Gollinger gets here. Are you insinuating that I ain't to be trusted? I got ethics. Yeah, let the Duke plant it. That's what I say, and I bring it all the way through seven states, and it looks just as fresh as the day it was born. <laughs> There's our girl, Scrapper. Take your place and you can dance. Oh, thank you. That's a very nice gesture, but you come back when you've grown up. But I can really play. Now run along, son. You're bothering me. Hi, Toots. Please, mister. I won't hurt your violin. Listen, child, this is not a toy. It costs money. Why well, I paid $15 for this violin. Now go on. Go on. I'm working. I mean, I'm playing. Well, that is what I'm playing, I'm working. Now, go on, get out of here. Oh, Scrapper. Did you phone your mother like you promised? Not yet, but I will. I told Tom I'd phone from here. Well, honey, it's getting late. The phone's over there. Have them charge the call to me. Hurry now. Up to you, from mother. <clears throat> I want to call Beverly Hills, please. Beverly 2137. I have the money to pay for it. Oh, uh, well, certainly. Just use the telephone right around there. I'll get you through. Yes. I'll hold the money. I'd do anything to get Ronnie back safely. Poor child. I hope no harm has come to him. 
He wanted to learn to swim. And I had the pool drained. Poor Ronnie. How he must be suffering. Hello? Long distance? Yes? Hello? Hello, is this the Kimball residence? Hello, Aunt Elsie. This is me, Ronnie. I'm all right, Aunt... Who were you phoning to? I was just calling home. I see. Ronnie Kimball, eh? What were you talking to the Duke about this afternoon? Duke? Who's he? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> My dear Mr. Turner, <clears throat> I, I should say lucky, Mr. Turner. I want you to meet these two very charming young ladies, Miss Reed and Miss... Uh, Simpson. Uh, Simpson. How are you? Simpson, uh, pardon me. <laughs> but are you certain it was Ronnie? Oh, I'm absolutely positive. Captain, Captain, can't you do something? Please, please, they're trying to trace the call. They'll report back in a minute. Calm yourselves. Yes? Yes, you say the call came from Pinecrest Lodge? Thank you. Get me the municipal airport. You can take time while on the rest of this dance. They don't need a violin. Now, Lily, I told you not to bother me. Well, all you ever do is to take me to dance and make me sick. You get sore if I dance with anybody else, and I get sore sitting. All right, Lily, don't get excited. Wait a minute. Take it, Pete. And remember, I'll still be here. Hi, Duke. There's something I want to tell you. Now, I started to telephone... Scrapper, you still here? Didn't that tell you he's put me on the spot? But, Duke, you see, I was telephoning and... Scram! You want to blow up the works? You don't know me, see? You never even saw me. Get it? Excuse me, sister, I gotta talk to somebody about, uh, business. Get a load of Duke and the kid. You know who that kid is? How should I know? That's Ronnie Kimball. Not really. The Duke's got him staked out here. He's trying to pull something on the side. Keep your eyes open. Shall we? Relax. Wait till the chief gets here. Uh -huh. See his father's Oxford accent sticking out of his ears. Something to make this plane go faster? Well, I'm afraid not. It's doing 200 miles an hour now. Slow, folks. Calling Airway Special Number 14. Calling Airway Special Number 14. Calling Airway Special Number 14. Hello, Captain Blake. Hold the line. Go ahead, Sheriff. Nice work, Sheriff. That bill's part of the registered mail robbery committed by the Gollinger gang back in Chicago. They were all gold certificates. You say the chauffeur picked the bill up at Pinecrest? That ties into the information we have about young Kimball's whereabouts. 
Now look, I'm flying down there now. Send out a general alarm and move in on the lodge. Hello, Chief. Why, what detained you? I've been dodging coppers all the way. This Kimball kid disappears and I get the blame. Can you beat that? That comes from having your evil reputation. <laughs> Did you notice that kid playing the violin? There's no time for riddles. We're solitaire. Never mind solitaire. That kid playing the violin is Ronnie Kimball. What's he doing here? Better ask Duke. He brought him here. Ask him, I'll break his neck. Hi, Chief. Here's your sugar, all safe and sound. Well, if you give me my 200 bucks for bringing it to you, I'll scram. You rat. Bringing the hottest kid in the country to a hideout. What are you trying to do, get smart? I mean, Chief, I didn't do nothing. How can I help it if a kid follows me here? Kids like me. I better go get Solitaire. He's watching the kid. I was thinking... I'll do the thinking. Bring them both up. You better let me go after him, Chief. The kid knows me better than him. Two to one, he's out for uh, half an hour. It's a bet. Come on, kid, we got business. I got a surprise for you. Your folks are on the phone up in my room. You want to talk to them, don't you? Oh, yes, thank you. So you're Ronnie Kimball? Yes, sir. What are you doing here? Say, boss, you're not overlooking the bet, are you? Here's a good chance to add to what we already got. I'm not overlooking a thing. Lock him in there. All right, let's get out of here. Uh, he'll be out for an hour. He'll be out for an hour, all right. Uh, two to one, he won't. OK, I'll take that. Ha! Oh, gee, scrapper. Nobody will get hurt. Keep playing. Oh. There's any feeling the kid's apt to get hurt. I says the kid stays here. You double-crossing rat. I really ain't hurt much. It just grazed me. Gee, Duke, you're a swell G-man. You almost caught him single-handed. Sure, kid. Please send Duke to the best hospital. Give him anything he wants. He's my pal. Aren't you, Duke? You bet, Scrapper. And don't you worry about me, Narn. Because I'm going to be all right. And don't forget, whenever you're in Washington, lick me up. So long, Scrapper. So long, pal. I insist you save me. 
You insist nothing. I insist that you're the one that saved me. Will you two boys please quit arguing? I think you're both swell. Ronnie! 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 Darling! Oh, why are you so excited? I just went for a walk. Darling, the swimming pool will be filled tomorrow. And you can play with the kids whenever you want to.